Doc Rampageo here with another edition of Let's Talk About, and today I'm talking about three of my experiences with the supernatural. Now, you might believe in ghosts, you might not believe in ghosts, doesn't matter. Me, myself, I like to keep an open mind about things. I don't want to say I definitely believe in ghosts or I definitely don't believe in ghosts, but there has been three experiences I've had that have made me question things. I'm going to run through these in chronological order. The first experience is probably the most chilling of all of them, honestly to me. It still gives me goosebumps thinking about it. But to understand why this happened, you're going to need a little bit of backstory. I grew up in a small town with very little crime. And in this town, in what is now the library, there was an old abandoned school with a gym attached. I know what you're thinking, ooh, old school, creepy abandoned school. And it's not really about the abandoned school, it's about the attached gym, which they used as a rec center. You know, they had teen night dances and stuff there, and blah blah blah. But, growing up in a small town with uh, very little crime, the lock to the gymnasium, which they used as a teen center that was attached to the abandoned school, uh, was not the best, and you could basically just pull the door right open. Now being troublemaking teenagers, as I and my friends were, we quite often would sneak into there at night and hang out and do whatever. You know, nothing bad. We didn't break anything. We didn't steal anything. We just went in there for a place to hang out and maybe drink some peppermint schnapps that we had a bum by us. But, you know, anyway. So, uh, one night, me and a female friend of mine were in there, uh, all alone, in the dark, and... You know, it's a big gymnasium, there's a stage with some couches on it, and we're on the couches, um, doing what a boy and a girl, a teenager, would be doing in the dark all alone. You know, I'm not going to spell it out for you, but either way. So we're in this dark gymnasium, and we start to hear the sound of sneakers squeaking on the parquet basketball floor and a basketball dribbling, which is weird, because we're the only ones in here. So, you know, this continues for a while, and we're hearing the squeaking, we're hearing the dribbling, we're looking, we're not seeing anybody. It's dark, but it's not dark enough that someone could be dribbling a basketball and moving around on the floor without us seeing. And we're hearing, you know, the squeaking and the dribbling and all this, and we're starting to get very freaked out. So, you know, we left. Uh, I can't explain that. That's something I can't explain. Why was there the sound of someone playing basketball in a completely empty gym that was barely used at night? There wasn't someone in there playing a trick on us. That much I'm sure of. So, I don't know. That's pretty spooky, right? Second incident. Um, me and some friends were shooting a horror movie, which is something we did quite often back in our high school days. Um, and there was this old abandoned house at the state park. Again, another spooky abandoned place, but this one actually does have to do with that. So there's this old abandoned house at the state park that we used to go into and party, and, you know, we filmed a lot of stuff there because it was a great location to film a horror movie because it's a spooky old abandoned house with a lot of rooms. And we had been filming in there pretty much every night for, like, a week when one night we were filming and we hear the sound of one of the old door latches. You know, they're the old style, like, the just lift up latch, clicking up and down up and down, up and down. So we all stop filming whatever we're doing, and we're like, did you hear that? And we're all like, uh, you know, we're just scared, you know, we're in this abandoned house imagining things. But then it starts going again, up and down, up and down, up and down. And so we're freaked out by this point. So we're like getting very scared. You know, we don't think it's a ghost. We think it's maybe some crazy person who's gonna try and murder us, fucking with us. We don't know, but we're scared, so we're trying to get out of there. And, you know, we're we're grabbing stuff, and then it starts going louder. Up and down, 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 up and down. And over and over again, it just keeps going up and down. So we just start running. We, we run out of this house, and we run to the car, and we drive off. And then we get back, and we realize we had left our camera, we had left all the lights on in the house, still had electricity, which I don't know why, maybe because it's on a state forest, I don't know. But we left all the lights on, we left all our equipment there, because we were so scared, we just ran out of this house. So we had to go back. And we went back, and we did not hear the sound. 
and I'm reasonably confident there wasn't a crazy person there trying to kill us, um, because, again, I grew up in a town with very little crime, and, you know, very little homeless. There was never any homeless people in our town. You know, if you wanted to get a bum to buy you booze, like I spoke about earlier, you would take the train into the city, which, you know, is a lot to go through to get booze, but... You're a teenager, what are you going to do? You've probably exhausted all the liquor cabinets of your friends and your family. But that, anyway, I digress. That's not part of the story. In that instance, I'm not, again, I'm not 100% sure that it was, in fact, a ghost. But I do not think there was a crazy homeless person in there. I don't think it was someone we knew fucking with us because we were all there. It could have been other kids, but, you know, the only sound we heard was that latch going up and down and echoing through the whole house, so... You know, make your own decisions. The third incident is also very chilling. And this happened in the old house I used to live in. Uh, let me set the stage for you here. Uh, you know, when I was 13, I had um, sisters. My parents had gave birth to twins. Uh, and, you know, our house was small, so we ended up building another room in the basement, which is where I lived. And multiple times... Throughout my period living there, I would wake up and see a woman in a white dress with dark hair walking through the room. I was always ready to, um, you know, just write it off as being half awake or dream hags or anything like that. You know, not never really quite ready to say that the house was haunted because all I ever saw was this woman walking through. And it didn't happen all the time. It happened every once in a while. It maybe happened... Five, six times the whole time I lived down in the basement. But it was freaky as hell every time, believe you me. Anyway, this is not really about those incidents so much as it is one incident that happened in the midst of all those incidents. So, while this was all going on, I had a female friend sleep over one time. And, you know, we woke up in the morning... And she said my sister had come down and talked to her in the night, which I thought was weird, because at this point, my sisters were five or six, and they very rarely, if at all, came into my room. Now, I don't have an older sister, so I said, I said maybe, was it my mom? Was it a red-haired woman? And she, she hadn't met my mom yet. And she said, no, it was your dark-haired older sister. And I said, I do not have an older sister. And she told me that this woman had told her that she was happy that we had met and that she was here to take care of me, which, by the way, proved not to be true, so don't listen to a ghost tell you, for starters. But anyway, she said that, and I thought that was really weird. So I said, what was she wearing? And she said she was wearing a white dress. And I thought that was very fucking weird because, first off, I had never told barely anybody especially not this girl, about the woman in the white dress. I had mentioned it to a few friends who did not know her previous, but she had no knowledge of this, so I thought that was very weird. Again, maybe she was dreaming, maybe not, I don't know. Was it a ghost? Can't say for sure. But these three incidents in my life have led me to have a stronger belief in something than I would have normally. Now... All of these incidents could be explained in a variety of ways, um, but I was there for all of them, and I don't really know. The one in the middle with the latch is the only one I can really attribute to a real person, but again, we never, we never saw anything, we never heard anything again at that house, which we had been back to a few times. Um, you know, it's, it's just one of those things you can't, they're all things you can't explain. Um, but yeah. So that's three supernatural type events that have happened to me in my life. Uh, have you had any supernatural events happen to you in your life? If so, let me know in the comments down below. But anyway, this is Doc Rampageo from DKTV. We will catch you next time. Spooky ghost stories. Va. You know, if you wanted to get a bum to buy you booze, like I spoke about earlier, spoke about.